Lesson 4 for January 16 to 22, The Hard Way. Ready for teaching on the 23rd of January. Read by Dr. Percy Harold. Tuesday, January 19, What's in a Name? Our text for today is Isaiah 8, verses 1 to 10. Moreover, the Lord said to me, Take a large scroll and write on it with a man's pen concerning Meher Shalel Hash Baz, and I will take for myself faithful witnesses to record Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Jeberechiah. Then I went to the prophetess, and she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said to me, Call his name Meher Shalel Hashbaz, for before the child shall have knowledge to cry, My father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria will be taken away before the king of Assyria. The Lord also spoke to me again, saying, Inasmuch as these people refuse the waters of Shiloh that flow softly, and rejoice in Rezin and in Remaliah's son, now therefore, behold, the Lord brings up over them the waters of the river, strong and mighty, the king of Assyria and all his glory. He will go up over all his channels and go over all his banks. He will pass through Judah. He will overflow and pass over. He will reach up to the neck, and the stretching out of his wings will fill the breadth of your land, O Emmanuel. Be shattered, O you people, and be broken in pieces. Give ear, all you from far countries. Gird yourselves, but be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, but be broken in pieces. Take counsel together, but it will come to nothing. Speak the word, but it shall not stand, for God is with us. Can you imagine playing a ball game with Isaiah's second boy? By the time you could say, Meher Shalel Hashbaz, throw me the ball, it would be too late. But even longer than his name is its meaning. Swift is beauty, speedy is prey, or speed the spoil, hasten the plunder. Question. The message of the name clearly has to do with rapid conquest. But who conquers whom? Verse 4 tells us, for before the child shall have knowledge to cry, My father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria will be taken away before the king of Assyria. Isaiah 8, 1-10 reinforces the message of chapter 7. Before a child could reach a certain stage, spoils of war from the capitals of Syria and northern Israel would be taken by Assyria. Furthermore, because Judah had refused God's message of assurance, represented by the gently flowing waters of the Shiloh stream in Jerusalem, it would be overwhelmed by the mighty power of Assyria, represented by flooding from the great Euphrates River. Because Ahaz turned to Assyria, the names of Isaiah's sons referred to Judah as well as to northern Israel. Swift is beauty, speedy is prey but a remnant shall return. Why was there still hope? Because, although Assyria would fill Emmanuel's land, as we read in verse 8, they still had the promise that God is with us in verse 10. Indeed, what we see here is a theme that permeates the entire book of Isaiah, which is, Though there would be judgments on God's enemies in Judah and other nations, delivered in the form of military disasters, suffering and exile, the Lord would be with the faithful survivors of his people and restore them to their land. Question. Why does Isaiah tell us he legally recorded the child's name and had marital relations with his wife, the prophetess? Isaiah 8, 1-1. To three. Moreover, the Lord said to me, Take a large scroll and write on it with a man's pen concerning Meher Shalel Hashbaz, and I will take for myself faithful witnesses to record Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Jeberechiah. Then I went to the prophetess, and she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said to me, Call his name Meher Shalel Hash. Baz. The timing of this son was central to his significance as a sign. 
as with the sign of Emmanuel from the time he was conceived and born to the time Assyria defeated Syria and Israel, there would be less time than it would take for the boy to reach an early developmental stage. In this case, calling for his father or mother, as we read in verse 4. When Isaiah legally recorded the boy's name, even before his conception, he made the child and his name a public prophecy that could be tested by subsequent events. And so to finish today, despite repeating mistakes on the part of his professed people, the Lord was still willing to save them. How can we take this principle and apply it to ourselves personally, especially when we fail and fall in our own spiritual life. Hi there. Thanks for watching this video on the Advent Band Ministries YouTube channel. Please subscribe and click the bell icon to be alerted whenever we upload new videos. So, until we meet him in the clouds, may God continue to bless you. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. It's supported by the Sabbath School Department and Hope Channel Australia and is rebroadcast by Christian Record Services and through podcasts at It Is Written in the United States, Hope Channel Germany and through Apple iTunes and SoundCloud. Remember, God is always faithful.